Amen, amen, and amen. So, Happy New Year, by the way. It's a new year. It's a... And, and did anyone here make any New Year's resolutions? I, I was uh, thinking about New Year's, and I looked at some of my past New Year's sermons, and I, I'm not usually one to make resolutions. And I, I think one of the things, I've said this before, I'm not one to make usually, one to make usually, make reservate, resol, blah, 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 huh? I'm not one to make resolutions usually, but usually if I decide something needs to be changed, I just ignore it until my wife decides it needs to be changed too. And that's... <laughs> generally the way it works, and just and then work towards the goal. Um, I don't usually wait for the, the beginning of a new year to start something, except for this year. I, I've made a resolution this year. See, back in September, I decided that uh, I needed to lose a little weight and uh, began working towards it, but then things came up, life got in the way, and then after that, it was the holidays, and nobody goes on a diet during the holidays, and so it... Uh, my scale is pretty much the same as it was in September when I decided I needed to lose weight. And so I have decided, I've resolved this year that I'm going to work on losing some weight and just being healthier overall. But see, there's a thing with resolutions. And resolutions are a good thing. It's good to set goals. But those goals and those resolutions don't work unless you're resolute about making them work unless you work towards them, unless you put effort into it. See, back in September, I wasn't very resolute about losing weight, and I haven't lost any weight as a result. That, that, that's how that works. You have to work towards the goal to make it happen. And so, you know, as I made this resolution to lose weight in September, because of stress and busyness, like, it, it was pretty easy to set aside the goal because I wasn't resolute towards it. Now, as, as a church, River of Life Community Fellowship, we have goals. We have goals that we have been working towards and moving towards and um, goals that we have set. And today and then next Sunday as well, we're actually going to be looking at those goals. And we're going to talk about what needs to happen so that we can be resolute in working towards accomplishing those goals. <clears throat> and... We're going to work to figure out how to get to where we want to go. That, that's kind of like we, we see this place that we want to be. These are our goals. These are the things we want to accomplish. And we're going to talk about how we're going to get there. But first, in order to figure out where you want to go, the first thing you need to do is figure out where you are. And so that is what we're going to talk about today. Where are we now? So where are we? As, as a church and as, as we're working towards accomplish our goals, where are we at? And I, th I think the best way to figure out where we are is to look at the things we've been trying to accomplish, to look at our goals and evaluate how we're doing at reaching those goals, to see the state that we're in now. And I think that gives us a strong idea of how we're doing now so that we can plan what needs to be done to take us to where we want to go. So first, but first I want to just step back and just, you know, one of the, as we got here for prayer this morning, and um, one of the things Betty mentioned was that as she was just sitting down to pray this morning, the first thing God told her was, count your blessings, something, just be grateful. Grateful heart, that's what it was, grateful heart. I, and I, I think that's an important, to, to look at the things we have to be grateful to look at the, the things that we've seen that are good in this church. And so, you know, I think the, the church was founded almost 12 years ago. And, you know, it started out as, a, as a, a new church without a building and meeting in a place that was rented on every Sunday and having a trailer to carry stuff around and things like that. And, you know, and then we were able to purchase some property and then we were able to purchase this building and, and move into it. Um, and that, that, that was a good thing. God, we saw God move through that. Well, I, I wasn't here, but I know as a church, we, the church saw God move through that, and it was great. And then the church survived a year without a pastor. And there's not many churches that could do that. 
and especially smaller churches. Like a loss of a pastor, especially the, the unexpected and quick loss of a pastor can be devastating to churches. But this church survived being without a pastor for over a year. And then a little over three years ago, I was hired. And since then, we've been recommitted to our vision or our mission. We've uh, learned, we've uh, sought God for our vision. We've worked under that vision to, a, to as best we can to accomplish our mission. You know, we, we've been able to improve the building both inside and out. We, and, you know, we've worked also to improve our, our presence on the internet because the internet is the new lobby. The internet is where people go to learn about us so they can connect with us. And so we, we've improved our presence on the internet. And then, you know, over the last two years, we've had this pandemic going on and we've survived the pandemic. And that's also something that not every church can say. And that, like, this pandemic has been hard in so many areas of our lives. But as a church, we're surviving it. Our, our attendance has gone down because of it. But at the same time, you know, our finances have remained steady. And we've seen a steady stream of visitors coming. And especially over the last few months. And some of those visitors have stuck around a little bit here and there. And so we've seen... God move. Over the life of this church, we have seen God move and provide and protect, and we've seen God work through this ministry. We've seen success through God. And so that is a good thing. Those are things that we can step back and we can just have a grateful heart for. We can be thankful that God has accomplished all of that over the course of these last 12 years. But how are we doing at the things that he has called us to do? How are we doing at the things that he has said, this is what River of Life Community Fellowship is going to be and be about? Now, one of the first things we were called to do is actually find our name. And I preached about this a, a few years ago. We are River of Life. We are called to be a River of Life. And that's you know, one of the things, I, as I said, I preached about this about two years ago. And one of the things I mentioned is that you look throughout the the Old Testament, especially, and even some in the New Testament, that a name really defines a person. Like, like Abraham had, had a name, Abram, Ab, Abram had a name, and then God changed it to Abraham. It was, it was you know, a father to a father of multitudes because God was going to make him a father of multitudes. And we look at, at people like um, Peter, who was you know, named um, Cephas, and then God changed it to Peter. He's going to be the rock. The, the stone that, that God made him a rock. And so the name has meaning in a lot of ways. And so our name is, being river, is, is to be a river of life. Now, the river of life is found in the Bible in a couple of different stri- scriptures, namely Ezekiel 47 and Revelation 22. And in Revelation 22, we learn that the river of life flows from God. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth from the first heaven and the earth, <clears throat> first earth had passed away and I... That is the wrong verse. It's supposed to be 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as a crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. As a church, God is our source. God is our source. It, if we are called to be a river, then God has to be the source of that river. River. God has to be the place where that river starts. And that's... That's what Ezekiel told us as well. We see this in Ezekiel 47.1 where it says, maybe, <clears throat> excuse me. Matt, can you bring up Ezekiel 47.1? Thank you. Then he brought me back to the door of the temple and behold, the water was issuing from behold the threshold of the temple towards the east <clears throat> for the temple faced east. The water was flowing down from below the south end of the threshold of the temple south of the altar. So, so there, Ezekiel says it again, the, the water for the river of life comes from God, comes from his throne, from his temple. But one of the things that we also see here in Ezekiel is that not only is God the source, but the water flows out from him, that it keeps moving. A, a river of life is not a, a stagnant pond but a place where life moves and life flows through. 
<clears throat> and as this river moves, it brings life everywhere it goes. Ezekiel 47, 9, and wherever the river goes, every living creature that swarms will live, and there will be very many fish, for this water goes there, that the waters of the sea may become fresh, so everything will live where the river goes. And Revelation 22, 2, through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month, the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. We are called to be a river of life that God flows through. The life comes from God. It flows through us and brings life to the things that surround us. That's what we're called to as a river of life. So how are we doing at being a river of life? And I think overall, we're doing okay. I think when, when anytime someone comes here, I think we love them the best we can. We show kindness and compassion and love to the people that come here, <clears throat> and we work to show God's love to the people that, that are around us. And I, I think we try to do that for everyone we connect with in the community as well. For the people that we connect with in the community, we try to love them as best we can. <clears throat> and so, I and I think, you know, as far as being a river of life, we're doing okay. There's room for improvement because there's always room for improvement, but I think we're doing okay. Now, another thing God has called us to is our mission. Now, <clears throat> from the, the moment this church was founded, our mission hasn't changed. It, it's remained the same. Some of the words used to describe it have changed, but the, the, the mission has been the same, and that is to be empowered by God to lovingly reach others for Christ. That is our that is what we are trying to accomplish. <clears throat> and that actually comes from the words of Jesus. As we look at the words of Jesus, we see this. Acts 1.8 tells us, Jesus said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit grants us power to be God's witnesses, to be able to tell people about him. <clears throat> and Jesus tells us that we are to let the Holy Spirit give us the power and the ability to tell others about God. In Matthew 22, Jesus was asked the question, what is the greatest commandment? And he answered it by saying, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourselves. We are to love others. That, that is, you know, the, the, you look at all of what the Old Testament tells us about God, and the two most important rules are to love God and love others. Everything else depends on those two things, loving God and loving others. And then in Matthew 28, Jesus gave us the great commission. Jesus said to them, came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So when we put all of that together, the Holy Spirit gives us power to love and reach others for Christ. So we are to be empowered by God <clears throat> to lovingly reach others for Christ. That is our mission. And how are we doing at following that mission? Let's evaluate that. As I evaluate it, I see that the Holy Spirit is here. I, I see that in, in so many different aspects. And I think part of it comes from evaluating my own life and, you know, asking the question, you know, am I empowered by the Holy Spirit? And, you know, seeing things in my own life and then seeing those same things in the church. And so I, I, I think the Holy Spirit is here. But it, it, it feels like, there's something not quite right in that as well. It almost feels like we're standing and waiting for the Holy Spirit to push us into opportunities to share Christ with others. Like we're, we're just standing there waiting for the Holy Spirit to make us do it rather than, you know, following the Holy Spirit in to opportunities to lovingly reach others for Christ or putting ourselves 
into positions where those opportunities to lovingly reach others for Christ would naturally exist. One of the things that, <clears throat> that I, I remember just learning and just thinking about is I had a pastor just ask the question, how many non-Christians do you know? And just that start evaluating my, you know, my circles. And, um, you know, being a pastor, I, I'm, I'm at home with my family. I'm here working. And generally when I'm someplace else, it's a meeting with other pastors. You know, and like my circle consists mostly of Christians. And so if, if my circle consists mostly of Christians, how many opportunities do I have to share Christ with someone who doesn't know him? Like, unless someone walks through the door, I don't have a lot of opportunities. And so, and that's just kind of one of the things that the Holy Spirit showed me about me personally, that, you know, the, there's definitely some room for improvement to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, by either following him better or putting myself in the position where he can work through me. So, and as far as loving people, I, as I said, I think we're doing great. I think we're really good at loving people that God puts in our path. And I, I think I've seen that over the last year, especially here. Like, it's just, I don't know that I've seen anyone come through our doors that hasn't been loved and loved as good as we can love them. And so I, th I think we're doing really well. But <clears throat> what about reaching people for Christ? And this also, like, this is kind of a hard thing to evaluate in a lot of ways because truly only the Holy Spirit knows what's going on in someone's heart. Only the Holy Spirit knows if someone's life is truly being transformed by Christ. We can't know if someone has accepted Christ as, Lord, as the Lord of their heart unless they tell us. But one way that we might be able to evaluate how we're doing reaching people for Christ is by how people are changed. Um, <clears throat> because a relationship with Christ changes a person. It makes them different. And so we ask the question, have we seen people's lives being transformed by what we're doing here? And I think we have. I think we have seen people <clears throat> that we are connected with. I think we've seen those people being transformed by God. <clears throat> and I, I think we've seen that. I think there's room for improvement, like with all things. And I think there's, you know, obviously opportunities that we probably miss to share to share Christ with others, to allow them to be transformed. But I think we're doing okay at following our mission. We could be doing better, but I think we're doing all right. <clears throat> now, besides our name and our mission, the other thing that we're really called to is our vision. Now, if you think the, the mission is what we want to accomplish, like we want to be empowered by God to lovingly reach others for Christ, the vision is how we make that happen, how we go about accomplishing that mission. And our vision here at River of Life is to be a people knowledgeable in the word, practiced in prayer, full of the Holy Spirit, and focused outward. Right? And the, those are all biblical things. We see that like the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. <clears throat> right? It shows us what we're supposed to be doing and where we're supposed to be going. And so we want to be knowledgeable in what the word says <clears throat> because it teaches about God and life. And prayer connects us with God. <clears throat> it allows us to know him and allows us to hear him when he is speaking to us. Prayer connects us to God. <clears throat> and as we've already talked about, the Holy Spirit gives us power to be God's witnesses. <clears throat> but the Holy Spirit also does other things like teach us, <clears throat> helps us to understand the teachings of Christ, helps us to remember the things that we've learned in the Bible and apply them to our lives. <clears throat> And so we need to be full of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and we'll never be able to reach the lost, to reach others for Christ, if we're not focused outside of ourselves. As Paul told the Romans, <clears throat> for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him <clears throat> of whom they have not, who, whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? <clears throat> if we're focused on ourselves, we'll never be able to connect with the lost. Because we're too busy thinking about us. We're too busy dealing with what we want or what we think we need. <clears throat> and we lose sight of other people. 
and we lose sight of other people, we're not preaching the good news to them. And if we're not preaching the good news to them, they're not hearing it. They can't believe it. And then they don't have the opportunity to call on the name of the Lord to be saved. <clears throat> so <clears throat> in order to fulfill our mission, we need to be knowledgeable in the word, practiced in prayer, full of the Holy Spirit, and focused outward. How are we doing on that? Like, <clears throat> I, I think <clears throat> we're doing well when it comes to, be, comes to being knowledgeable of the word. I think one thing like, that I've just been blessed with, and um, when I started here as a pastor, like people would say, oh, how's it going? Like One of the first things I could say is I haven't had to correct any weird theology. Like, I haven't had to do that. I haven't had to, you know, like, someone says, and I was like, that's not true. Or that's not what the Bible says. I haven't had to really do that here because I think Pastor Lynn and Pastor Rick did a great job of grounding this church in the Word. And there's always room for improvement because like, we could read the Bible every day for the rest of our lives and still never fully understand it and still never fully be able to pull all the truth out of it that God has. And so there's always room for improvement, but I think we're doing really well at being knowledgeable in the Word. <clears throat> being practiced in prayer is something that we're working towards. And I, I think, you know, I think we were working really well towards it, but then the pandemic happened, and, like, you know, suddenly, you know, it was, it was harder to get together and pray and like things, like there was so much going on and so much to try to figure out. And then just the <clears throat> craziness that came along with that. And then I think my own business as well has gotten in the way of it. My own life stresses has gotten in the way of how we're able to pray together as a group and how we're able to focus on prayer. And I, I don't think we've recovered back to where we were before the, before the pandemic started. And so I, I, think we have, I think we have work to do in being practiced in prayer. And I can tell you, I was very convicted as I was writing this message, and answers prayer calendars out there. I, mean, like I, I was convicted as like, okay, what have I been doing to help us be practiced in prayer? And so I think we have a lot of work to do. And we've already talked about the Holy Spirit. He, he is here, and he is with us. But I think we can improve in our ability to be led by him. And I think, I think we can improve in our ability to being open to allowing him to lead us and to work through us. I think that's an area where I think we needed some improvement. And I think we're doing okay at being focused outward, focused outside of ourselves. I think we have our, our missions budget, so we continue to support organizations that are outside of us that work to reach others for Christ. Um, you know, we, we also have other things going on, like, like we allow Narcotics Anonymous to use our building. Um, we charge them for it, but I don't remember, I don't remember the last time they left us a check and I haven't asked for it, you know? Like, like we, we allow them to use our building. And then we also, um, like we have toilet, toiletry care packages that, in our bathrooms that people that in need can have and just take. And then, you know, we also have benevolent funds set aside in our budget to help people. Someone comes in saying, you know, I, I need some help. I, say, I can help you with some food or I can help you with some gas. Here's a gift card. And we, we are able to help people in need. And so I think we're doing okay at being focused outside of ourselves. And like I said, like with so many things, I think there's some room for improvement. And I think one of the areas that we lack in terms of being focused outside of ourselves is actually something that all Christians find themselves in, and that is Birds of a feather flock together. And I've already kind of mentioned this, that we tend to associate with people that we are like, right? Like we, we, we associate peop with people that we have things in common with. And so we tend to associate with Christians. So we, we tend to not connect and associate with non-Christians as much. And that, that gives us more opportunities to focus on ourselves or to focus on Christians rather than, and, and fewer opportunities to focus on people outside of the church, outside of Christ. And so I, I think that's one area that we could probably see some improvement. So once again, in terms of, <clears throat> of uh, how we're doing, I think we're doing well at being focused outward, but there's room for improvement. 
And so overall, bringing this all together, how, how are we doing at the things that God has called us to do? I, I think, you know, how are we doing at living up to our name, at following our mission and living our vision? Vision, I think, you know, we're, we're doing okay. But there's always room for improvement. There's always things that we can do better and things that we need to, to, to improve. And next week, we're actually going to talk about the ideas for improvement. How do we get to where we want to be? How do we make the improvements? We're going to talk about that next week. And we're also going to just take some time to dream a little bit because that's an important part of allowing God to work through us is to be able to just open ourselves up to things that like, we can't even really plan for, but we'd really like to see because then God has to do it. And so we're, we're going to do those things next week. But I think that stepping back to evaluate ourselves like this is a very important thing to do. It, it's, it's an important thing to do because it allows us to honestly assess where we are so that we can move forward better. It allows us to have an honest look at how we're doing. <clears throat> but I, I think there's also something more that goes with this taking time to evaluate ourselves as a church. Because something that happened to me this week while I was working on this message, as I was thinking of who we are as a church and how we're doing and the things God has called us to do, I began to think a lot more about who I am and what I do as a follower of Christ. How am I doing? I began to evaluate myself. And once I began evaluating myself, I began to see areas where I could use some improvement, some areas where I need to open myself up to God and allow him to, to work I had some areas of my life where, you know, the Holy Spirit showed me need to be dealt with. And, <clears throat> and sometimes, you know, as, as we're following Christ, we, we forget that we are supposed to connect with God to work out <clears throat> our salvation, to work out our faith. That is what Paul told the Philippians. <clears throat> Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But the thing is, is like, for it is God who works in you. We are supposed to dig into God to figure out this faith that we have. And we're, we are supposed to dig into God and allow him to teach us and lead us and guide us and to build our faith within us. We are to work out our own salvation by being connected to God. And that that was, you know, something that really kind of happened in me this week is that remembering. Like, there's areas in my life that need improvement, and there's areas of my faith that need improvement, and I need to connect with God to allow those things to be improved. But uh, what about you? How are you doing? As we think about, you know, as a church, as we think about things corporately, I think it's also important to think about things individually. Because, you know, as a church, we are a body. We are a group that works together to accomplish the mission. And so we need to take time to evaluate ourselves. How are you doing? Are you working out your own salvation? Have you taken the time to evaluate your life and your faith? How are you doing on the things that God has called you to? Are you doing those things that God has called you to, or do you need some improvement? You know, the, the new year really is kind of a, it's, it's a good time to look back and to see how we've done and to look forward to see what God can do in us. Hello, I'm Rich England, the pastor here at River of Life Community Fellowship, and I want to thank you for joining us for our online service today. Here at River of Life, we hope and pray that you've been blessed and encouraged by what God had to say today. If you'd like to know more about our church, we invite you to find us online 